this fish. Oh, I think it's a potential 30. I think he's gonna join the 30 club. Oh, it's a head shaker. It looks like a striper. It looks like a striper. And what do you know? It is a striper. So, are you a believer in the GT Minnow yet, bro? Woo! Second cast. I haven't been cast yet. Pull it over here. Check your line. Retie. Everything. Big fish. Good hookup. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Connery. This is Out of Work Outdoors. Today we are continuing the Fishing Explained 2021 series for striper fishing. This is for the month of April. Okay, month of April. This is probably the beginning of a three month span, which is the most exciting times for striper fishing. No matter what part of the United States you're from, whether you're, you know, centralized, I call it centralized as in, uh, you know, California, Delta, Oklahoma, Georgia area, that's central, or either from the north or the south. North will be like Maine, real far Maine, and maybe even Florida might have some stripers. I know there's some signs of stripers in the Houston area. Okay, so for right now, the middle, the middle area, guys, me, Oklahoma, landlocked stripers, uh, a lot of Lake Hartwell type stuff, landlocked stripers. This is what's happening right now. They're either spawning or they're about to spawn in the next coming weeks, right? So we're going to show you the baits. All the baits will be linked in the video description. You will get a link to either Amazon or to to JNH Tackle or something like that, so you can go pick these up. And we're gonna show you where, and then we're gonna show you when, all right? Then we're gonna kinda just tell you our experiences with everything. So when it comes to stripers, first and foremost, we have a lot of background with fishing dams and rivers, right? So when it comes to dams and rivers, this time of year, choice number one, undoubtedly, and it's not even comparable, this is going to be the Alabama rig. This is the rig from Terminator. This is the 8 inch 5 wire titanium arms outfitted with Gambler Easy Swimmers with Bass Pro XPS hooks on it. This is our ultimate combo. This has been our ultimate combo for 5 years now. Yeah. Every size striper confidence with that. Damn fishing, right? High, super fast current and everything like that. And if that doesn't work, or if your striper's a little smaller, if you got white bass hybrids mixed in there, we go to this. This is something we just came up with. We just developed it. We're actually building this in house. It is an umbrella rig, but everything's clear. Okay, so for those guys that are Oklahoma typically has uh, muddy water, so you can get away with the, the metal arms. But if you're in a world or if you're on a lakeside where it's clean water, and they've seen the actual rig, the metal rig, too many times, throw them this, and they will still smash this because it looks just like a uh, bait ball. Okay, clear water. Uh, basically, the way I have it rigged up, weightless on top, and three quarter ounce. On the bottom, they're all Kitex. Of course, this is our bass fishing rig, but also doubles as uh, striper duty. Smaller stripers like this is more finesse. Throw that on 25 pound fluoro, or or use the metal one. Up to you. But here in Oklahoma, here in Oklahoma, this time of year, it's all about going cheap. When you talk about going cheap, it's nothing beats the jig head and the fluke body. Okay, so everybody throws this. This is like the local favorite. French pearl with the tail dipped green. Well, it actually comes like that. 
Or for me, I, I actually prefer this color, you know, after the white is played out. Watermelon green is also a good color. And, you know, don't forget about the bucktail. Bucktails are good too. This one's kind of messed up. It's been the, it's been the box too long. But a bucktail, this is the banana head with a little blade on the bottom. I don't know if the blade really matters, but it looks pretty cool in the water. Okay, so you can throw this out. You can jig it on the bottom. And that's a cheap way of catching stripers. You know, or, or, if in certain situations, reference our video long range bobber, okay? Because we do do this a lot in that video. Where you take a bobber, this is a probably a three ounce bobber, it's a huge lead weight on the bottom, foam on top. Take this little fluke, put it on top, like that. Main line goes here, and then from between these two, you tie about two or three feet of 50 pound mono. And as you cast this with your extremely long surf rod, this will actually detach midair and it'll land in the water. You know, fish it like that in the current, and you'll get smashed. It's really good, really good in the, the springtime. Okay, so with that being said, there's also the chance that bluegill is going to do really well. This is the first time we mentioned live bait. Okay, we've seen it where in the beginning of the season, I think the fishermen are kind of lazy, so everybody wants to use artificial lures, right? There's going to get to a point in the month where bluegill is going to be the deal. After the fish have seen everything, they want to eat the live bait. Get them bluegills. Bluegills also typically push out a slightly bigger bait. Uh, slightly bigger average fish, okay? So, bluegills, let's not, let's not discount them. They will work. Uh, if you can get shad, shad works pretty good too, but I feel like the bluegill works a little bit better. If you can get bluegills. In our state, you could cast net for bluegills. So, go to the local ponds cast net for them. Or if you really want to go old school, you know, throw some worms at them, they'll bite that. Um, last but not least in the world of, well, not last but not least, but if it's stripers, don't forget about the jerk baits. Come on, guys. Jerk baits, all types, all different sizes. That's a Bomber 15, 15A with upgraded hooks because I know I'll be using that. This is a Dual Realis. 120 size yeah and all these are the bigger sizes none, none of that none of that 110 size okay this is a jumbo look at that one that's a jumbo yo zuri magnum crystal minnow lots of confidence in that lucky craft once again like i said bluegill color lucky craft 128 hooks are stock still needs to be upgraded but basically where you want to fish these for me, uh, uh, these rip bait, jerk baits, they typically do better right at morning hours or right before dark. Because it feels like the striper has really good vision. So when they see this really good, when they chase it real, real good, and they see it, they just tend to turn away. They know it's fake. So you kind of have to you know, play with light a little bit. So that's why a lot of people throw those at night. Uh, a lot of people throw them on windy days. Windy, cloudy days are a lot more successful with them. And if it's bright blue days, just put that away. It's not going to work. Okay. And on top of that, a really slow pencil popper. Okay. So we've done February. We've done March. This is April. We haven't talked top water yet. And you know, in my heart of hearts, we're suckers. We're suckers for top water. If I can find an opportunity to throw top water, I'm throwing top water. So this is the Evergreen Shower Blows. Very popular, very high quality Japanese lure. But this is an example for you guys. I actually use this for bass a lot. But stripers will hit this. Our local stripers will hit this. But they will really mangle up these hooks. So we always change them out to Gamagatsu 4 size 4's EWG hooks. They will hold a striper pretty good. Uh, but this style of lure is what I'm trying to say. The pencil popper type stores, like type lures. Can't talk right now. But what you want to do is they're not going to hit that aggressive striper walk that we all, that you guys always see in the videos. When we throw them out, we're just like, but we're just, this thing just splashing left and right. They're not interested in that right now. They're just not. So what you want to do is throw it out, slowly walk it. Slowly walk it. 
they might have to nose up on it and inspect it a little bit first. But then they'll bite it. Okay, so this top water bite is slow, but it does exist. It might exist towards the end of April, definitely May, and for sure in June. Okay, so top water season has officially started. Okay, I said it. Top water season has officially started. Alright, so that's the baits. That's the baits. Okay, so that's the baits I'm going with. Uh, as you can see, the past two months we didn't say anything about live bait. And we didn't say anything about top water. But there they are. Top waters. And live bait. It's here. For all those guys, hope you're happy. Because I know I am. Top water. My passion's right there. Where? So, stripers, we're talking about the spawn. They have to run up to a certain point before they spawn. So, that magic area is going to be between 3 and 6 feet deep. So, the guys have lake masters. The guys have navionics on their fish finders and everything. Just highlight that sucker, right? 3 to 6 feet. It will it'll just draw it out in red, basically, on your fish finder. Go up to them. There's, there's probably about 10 good locations uh, that have creeks flown into this water depth. And bam, you're done. Run up there. The guys that are on the bank, same thing. Try to get access to this area. That's where they're going to be at most of the time. They are in running water creeks or in, you're in the dams. Okay, so one or two, they're going to be there. But, but there is one, there is one, you know, <laughs> Black sheep amongst the herd. Wind blown points. Wind blown points. There are some fish that do not <laughs> run up the river and will spawn on wind blown points. Wind blown points <laughs> had they do it does have a little bit of current, especially if the say here's the point and the wind's blowing this way. There is a little wind current, wind generated current that goes across the point. Some fish will spawn on that. Okay, so keep that in mind because. If everybody's running up the creeks, if you find the wind blown points that has a striper spawn on it, you probably got it to yourself. Okay, so black sheep of the pack, black sheep of the pack for sure. Keep that in mind. So if you can't find them here, check there. If you can't find can't find them here, check here. Right? And what's the deal? When are they biting? They bite all day. If they are in the shallows, they are biting all day. They might not be active, but you know, get them, just bump them a little bit with the A rig or something. They will bite. They will bite. They will bite all day. So that is April in a nutshell. Hopefully, uh, you picked up some pointers on where to go. From here on out, we're going to talk about more top waters, the post spawn. There's going to be a uh, a major major either herring spawn or shad spawn for the next month okay so you don't want to watch you don't want to miss that make sure you subscribe to the channel for that because that is all power fishing we're not doing any of this slow stuff it's all top waters it's all just fast baits and it's it's fun okay there's a fast and furious moment in the morning first hour or so then it's dead okay we'll get into that next month and of course, of course, the stripers are hitting back to the deep water. So we're going to cover electronics. So that's the major thing about next week. I mean, next episode about striper fishing is electronics are coming heavy and hot. Because up until now, we didn't talk about it very much. So keep that in mind. All those guys that are trying to find striper deep, we're going to cover all that next month. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. My name is Connery from Out of Work. I'll see you all next one. Okay, bye.